Thank you, Joshua. Wow, what a reading here. It is talking about the kingdom of heaven. First seek ye the kingdom of heaven. Um, first, I'd like to open up with a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we come in the mighty, precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and we thank you for this time of worship this morning. My prayer is that I decrease and you increase. I pray they not see the messenger, but they see the message. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title today is First Thing First. When you ever think about that title, it really sets up the premise that we need priorities. What happens first? Many a times we like to jump to the end of a thing, but we must understand the beginning of the thing. How did it get started? Well, today the Spirit of God wants to let us know what's first in our lives. Now, if we look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 says this, We love Him because He first loved us. Wow, what a statement that God gives us is that he lo we love Him because He first loved us. I'm here to tell you that it all starts with love. You know, there's a popular song by a, a, a artist that says what love has to do with it. I'll tell you this, love has everything to do with it. Because as we go on a little further, the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm telling you, it begins with love. And as you see there, love always gives. God loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. This is where you can find out where someone's at is are they willing to give? Love gives, not just takes and receives. One of the things that I love so much is the Bible tells us, He that knoweth not, knoweth, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Can't, you know, so God is love. The simple form is that God is love. That's coming from 1 John 4, 8. And the question, if God is love, the question is this. Are we able to forgive? Wow. Boy, I think that's where the rubber meets the road. The Bible tells us that even in this chapter, Matthew chapter 6, if you read the preceding verses, it says, if you forgive not your brother... God will not forgive you. I'm telling you, those are some stern words that God, Jesus gives us that saying if we cannot forgive somebody else, how do we expect for God to forgive us? Well, I'm telling you, whenever you have the love of Christ in you, you will forgive. Love is the indicator of it all. I love it. God gives us so much information. When we think about love, and we're saying first thing first, we're saying it starts with love. God gives us some indicators to let us know where someone's at. We're not judging them, but the Bible tells us you will know a tree by its fruit. I want you to be clear here. An orange tree cannot produce apples. And an apple tree cannot produce oranges. Your fruits will tell where you're at. Now in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23. I really harp on this because as children of God, it gives us some discernment. God tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. And I'm telling you, whenever you're trying to figure out who to um, communicate with, fellowship with, or even marry, you better make sure that they are exhibiting the fruit of 
of the Spirit. As it says here in the Galatians chapter 5, let's take a look at that. And, I, and I, you know when I was, the Spirit was putting this together, this was amazing. Look at this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. It first starts with love. And then it says joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Wow. Man, I'm telling you, we would have great relationships if we do some fruit examination. Find out, does it start with love? That will tell it all right there. Now, when we're talking about love, it starts with love, but love also motivates you. You know, I love what Jesus said here. I mean, what they said here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, I want you to write that down. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Listen to this. It says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Wow. What constrains you to do what you do? Is it jealousy? Is it hate? Is it covetousness? I'm telling you, if it's not by love, the Lord will not bless it. I'm telling you, first thing first, it first starts with love. Now the next thing I wanted to talk about is what my son read. We need to seek the kingdom of God. Now here we go. We are seeking so much from the world instead of seeking from God. We are trying to chase the American dream, trying to um, do our own will and do our own thing. That's the big cliche now. Do your own thing. Be all you can be. I'm telling you, you better stop being all you can be. You better be what Christ made you to be. Now look at, look at this here in Matthew chapter 6. I want to go back and take a look at this. Because if we get this simple premise here, I'm telling you, your life will be blessed. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. 31 says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? And what shall we drink? Or where all shall we be clothed? Let's stop there. There are three little simple things there that God tells us to take no thought for. He says, hey, he is going to give us something to eat. He is going to give us something to drink. And he's going to clothe us. He said, that's it. That's all that he is going to provide for us. Now verse 32 says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. God made you. He knows what you need. He knows you need food and water and clothing. I'm so happy is that he simply said those few things is that we need. But the world wants us to believe that we need other stuff. It wants us to believe that we need a, a big old house. We need a car. We need to have all these trinkets. We need to have all of these things. But God said, if you simply have food and water and clothes, he has blessed you. Are you able to take the blessings of the Lord simply just by food, water, and clothing and say, Thank you, Lord, I'm blessed. Or are you looking at the Joneses or the Smiths and saying, I want this, I want that, I don't have this, and complaining about everything. I'm telling you, God doesn't like complainers. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6 to 8. I'm telling you, I'm trying to help someone here. Listen to this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. It says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we will carry nothing out. Now look at verse 8 here. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Mm. Boy, I'm telling you, will you get that? And here's what I'm telling you. 
when you think about the disciples and apostles back in age, they didn't have a place of residence. They were mobile. God wanted these guys to be mobile. He says, hey, I'm sending you out. Don't worry about the food or the clothing. I will provide. That was the song we, that was singing when we started. God said, you simply go and proclaim the gospel and he will provide. But so many times we're hunkered down and we're not mobile. God simply put food in your mouth and clothes on your back and tell you to go. He wants us to be mobile. He doesn't want us to be hunkered down. Because whenever we get hunkered down, we will not do what he told us to do. I'm telling you, I've seen it so many times. I've explained it so many times that, you know, I, I'll keep explaining it. But whenever we get hunkered down, things change. I'll give you an example. When um, I was in a ministry where we were working out of a school building, the Lord was blessing, people was getting saved, but then they built a building. And everything changed. Everything was centered around a building. And then they used the phrase, they're going to church, which drives me crazy. You can't find anywhere in the Bible where God told you to go to church. He told you to go to the house of the Lord. But the point is, the people is the, bo is the church in the body of Christ. And whenever you get in those four walls... You start to lose the vision of what Christ has told you to be. Now, what is the vision? This is how you know they lost the vision. Look at Luke chapter 5, verse 31. Luke chapter 5, verse 31 to 32. Luke chapter 5, verse 31 to 32. Now, listen to this. This, this is what Jesus said. And Jesus answering said unto them... They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. And boy, listen to this. He says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Goodness gracious a lot. I want you to go learn what that means. He has not come to call the righteous, but he simply came to call sinners to repentance. Too often we see... Um, ministries focusing inwardly on each other. They are so concerned about having this activity, that activity. And when you think about where, where is their, their outreach, there is no outreach. They are only inwardly reaching. But I'm telling you, Jesus' main purpose was to, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. My question is you. Don't put it on your ministry for they're not doing it. My question is, are you doing it? Every child of God, God has given them a ministry to share the gospel. What constraineth you to share the gospel? Why are you not sharing the gospel? Well, it could be a couple of things. One, what does your lifestyle say about you? How are you living? If you are living like the devil, you can't tell anybody about God. But we have so many people always touting God, 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 living God. And then you look and look into their lives and you'll see that they're empty. The fruits that they're bearing are the fruits of the flesh. Well, I should say the works of the flesh, but not the fruit of the Spirit. I want, you, I want to talk about that for one second. If you look at Galatians chapter 5, that's where that's listed. It talks about the works of the flesh. It's plural. So that means there's many different ones in there. And they're, they're, they're separate. But when you look at the fruit, singular of the Spirit, it's plural, but it's all together. You're not going to separate the fruits fruit of the Spirit. So God has given us a great lesson there to see what someone is exhibiting. Examine yourself. If you are producing bad fruit, you're a bad person. Stop fooling yourself. The point is you got to come to the point that you submit to the will of God. And that's where we're moving to the next. So we already talked about first thing first, the love of God. 
We then talked about seeking the kingdom of God. And then we're talking about the judgment of God. I want you to take a look here. We're about to wind it up. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. Lord help us here. It says, for the time is come. I'm telling you we're here. That judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of Christ? Wow. God says judgment must begin at his house. Why must it begin at his house? Because he uses his people, he uses the church to reach the world. And I'm telling you, he is not pleased at what he has been seeing in these ministries. Claiming to be doing things for Christ. But it's nothing more than a glorified social club. They are not concerned about the loss more than anything. They simply are concerned about being comfortable and doing what they want to do. I'm telling you and listen to me well, if you serve Christ, you will not be comfortable in this world. If you are comfortable, the devil has lulled you into a sleep and you are not doing what Christ says. If you are any study of the Bible, you know that we are going to suffer. And he tells us that because the world loves us not. There was a recent article in the Charlotte paper where um, a man went down in um, downtown Charlotte and was prote protesting the RNC holding up a sign, Jesus saved. Well, the world threw flour and stuff, sprayed stuff on the man, but he still held his sign. Listen to me. If you are not being persecuted by the world, you are part of the world. God called you out of the world. You will be persecuted when you tell the truth. Now as we're moving on here. It says judgment must begin at the house of God. It must first. I don't know if you remember the message we gave about um, I, Elijah. When he was going to talk to Ahab. And Ahab. Elijah told him to bring 400 and 50 prophets of Baal. Baal is a false god. And he gave them a challenge. And the challenge was that if your God brings down fire and burns this altar, he's the true God. Well, what turned out was that they tried, they, they called from morning to noon to an evening. And then they start cutting themselves and just acting a fool. And actually there was no answer because we know it was a false god. But Elijah soaked the altar four times with four barrels, well, three times with four barrels of water. And it was soaked. And then Elijah called down from heaven and God burned the altar, the wood and the stones and licked up the water. And what happened after that? The people said, God, he's God. And then at the end of that, the judgment happened. He took, Elijah took the 450 prophets down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there. You know, I thought about that. Why? That was a tough judgment, but why did he slew the 450 prophets. Well, I'll tell you. Well, you just seen they called on a false god from morning to evening, acting a fool. They were not going to change their mind. So God destroyed them. I'm here to tell you, if God is changing your mind, if the, you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at you, I'm telling you, you better catch it. Because there's a day of coming when there will be no more call. There will be no more grace where you can come to Christ, your day of grace. Whenever you hear God's Spirit calling you, it's time for action. Don't let Satan delay it. Because God will bring judgment, and judgment comes. Now what does he say? It starts at the house of God. What does he want his children to do? Here we go. We know this. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And listen to this. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, and boy, here we go, 
shall humble themselves. Let me stop there. Humble themselves. Boy, I'm telling you, pride is terrible. You need to humble yourselves. Christians, listen to me well. Stop saying you're proud of somebody or something. God hates pride. You should hate it. So the first thing he tells you is to humble yourself. Whenever we learn some truth, it's tough to swallow. But humble yourselves and take the truth. He wants us to stop being prideful. This is what happens while we don't forgive people because we're prideful. Oh, they hurt me. I'm not going. They're not going to do me like that. I'm going to show them there. Humble yourselves. Have meekness. Meekness is power under control. Let God do the work in you. You can't do it. So we need to humble ourselves and listen to this. Pray. I'm telling you. Whenever you're doing a mighty work for God, it starts with prayer. That prayer prepares you for the battle that's ahead. Because it's going to be a battle. You need to be bathe yourself with prayer and get committed to God to go forward. And then he says, seek my faith. What are you seeking? What drives you? That's where the love of Christ constraineth you. Are you seeking the face of God or are you seeking the pleasures of the world? It will tell you where you are. And then it tells us to turn from our wicked ways. Folks, we got some wicked ways, me included. I'm not going to exclude myself. There are some things that's got to be cleaned up. God says we need to turn from our wicked ways. You will not get an ear or audience with Christ until you turn from your wicked ways. And then, there you go, then. That then means there's an action taken can play. There was four things he told you to do. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. And then he says, then. Praise God for then. What happens then? Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. I'm telling you today that if you are a child of God, you need to do Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And if you're not a child of God, He is talking to you right now. If you're filling the pool of the Holy Spirit, the question is very simple. First things first is have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Do you recognize that you are a sinner and you're wretched and you cannot save yourself? None of, the Bible tells us for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God, It says there's none righteous, no, not one. He tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, I'm telling you, you heard God's word today. I'm telling you, He loves you, that He gave his only begotten son for you and he simply wants you to recognize where you are look in the mirror of God's word and find out that you are a sinner and you simply need to come and come to Christ and say you're sorry for your sin and ask him to save you and he'll do it so the time is now the time is now. If you have not received Christ, it's your time. You can repeat this prayer. Remember, the prayer doesn't save you only if you believe it. So repeat this prayer if you've never received Christ as your personal Savior. Say, Dear God, I come now confessing I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. I believe Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day rose in payment for my sin. I accept him now into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you've done that, please drop me a line. Now, for those that are saved and are, are backsliding, remember, judgment starts with you. You haven't been doing what God told you to do. It's your time to say, Father, forgive me. And um, forgive me of the sins of omission that I haven't done for you. Forgive me for doing those wicked things. Humble yourselves and go before the mighty name of Christ. So I like to say a prayer for those that are saved, that are not doing what Christ told you to do in your life. Say, Dear God, I come now asking for forgiveness of my sins. Lord, I know that you are my Savior. 
Help you now to be my Lord. I submit unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to encourage you. First things first. Remember, it starts with love. Seeking God and then judgment. Have a blessed Sunday.